Episode 61, Work From Anywhere Challenge, Power. Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Gayla Scrivener Show. I'm so glad you're here. Building a business is a challenge, no doubt. But building a business when you're creating a lifestyle where you can work from practically anywhere, where, well, (laughs) well, that presents even more challenges. Last week in episode 60, I shared some of the ways Robert and I work with the challenges of finding enough internet to do our job. Internet is just one thing to consider. Power is another thing. Today, I've got Robert with me. And he's joining me today. Say hello, Robert. Hello. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. Because talking about power, there's some things that I take for granted, but you really know what you're doing. No, I just (laughs) wing it. You just wing it. But Mm -hmm. your job in this operation is to keep things powered up on our travels. That's true. And you do a fantastic job in doing so. Right, thank you. And I can talk a little bit about it, but I needed the expert. So I brought you I brought you in. (laughs) That's why I'm here. Exactly. Now in our work from anywhere lifestyle, we like to overland. Mm -hmm. Can you tell everybody what does overlanding mean? Well, it is vehicle based exploration travel. Um, for us it is off the grid. We wanna be away from you know, RV parks if we can, or don't want to see our neighbors. We want to be remote backcountry type stuff. And uh, basically, overlanding is, uh, like I said, vehicle-based exploration travel. Yeah, and a lot of the folks that overland, they don't take a lot of the major highways. They yeah, take a, all the back off roads. The, off the beaten track. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, forest roads they like to go mm-hmm. on. A lot of off-roading vehicles. But there's also motorcycles yes. that do that too. Which is a vehicle. It is. There you go. That's your vehicle. It is. And they just live out of the vehicle. Simplistically. For, yes. Yes. And so that's what we like to do. It's not for everyone, Mm-mm. but that's that's what we like to do. And we strive to do that. And I think that we all take for granted the just powering up things when we're at home in our regular houses. Plug you know, it in. You just plug things in. But when you travel like we do, powering up our equipment becomes a real issue. And we have to think about it like all Ahead the time. Ahead of the time. Yeah, we have to plan for it. So we have our computers. We have yours and mine. Mm-hmm. We have tablets. We have our phones, our cameras, our video cameras. What else do we have to charge? Oh, up? my. I, you listed a bunch. We got a USB power devices to keep our cell phones charged. Yeah, those external battery packs. That's it. That's it. Some of them have a little solar mm-hmm. with them, but I'm not sure. They don't like the solar. I don't know if it works fully on yeah. those. But, uh, you know, there's just a lot. We have We have things that take regular batteries so we have to make sure that we have uh what are those called Al- alkaline batteries? alkaline batteries or see i'm very yeah. technical here yeah <laughs> yeah like i have been our mouse our little mice yep it takes a, a double a yeah things like that we have our gopro i guess that's our video camera mm-hmm. so we've got a lot of things to keep powered up and a lot of that has to do with our work and yeah. so we need to think about that. Well, we can stay working from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Almost anywhere. Almost anywhere. Internet slows us down sometimes. It it does. It does. And I said last week that I wasn't going to lie to people mm-hmm. about internet, that it does become a stressful thing. It does. Well, I've seen you stressed <laughs> out. <laughs> Should have taken a picture. Oh, I had a meltdown the other day. But it's not as bad as when we first started. But there are challenges, and yep. it, it becomes a game. So the power... Is another game. Is another game and a challenge that we have. And when we used to travel in our RV a lot, Mm -hmm. that's when we kind of learned how to maneuver things. Because in the RV, we have a a generator Mm -hmm. uh, so that if we're not plugged into shore power. You can run that. If anybody doesn't know what that means, it's like when you have an RV and you're able to take out the big old plug or inner. Plug it in at the campground. Plug it in. They call that shore power. Mm-hmm. I, I learned these terms. You learned these. 
Not everybody knows these terms because not nope. everybody's an RVer, but uh, we had the the generator that we would use uh, to power up, and that would take just our regular diesel fuel. Yep, ran off the same tank as the uh, motor. But did. then it would not go down under so many gallons so that we could drive. It would shut off at a quarter tank. That way it would leave you enough uh, diesel fuel left in your tank to travel somewhere. To get gas or to get fuel. Yeah. Because that's, that's different. I learned a long time ago. I, I used to have a diesel uh, Volkswagen Rabbit. Mm-hmm. And I would used to say to my dad, hey, I'd gas that. You know, I need to go get gas. And he'd always, always correct not me. gas. It's fuel. Mm-hmm. So I had to you learn. Learned. I learned. Learned at an early, tender age of 18. <laughs> well, then, um, when we used to travel with that and power things up, we we learned a lot about you can't run everything all at the same time No. in an RV. Like, I learned I could not blow dry my hair, have the microwave going. And on, the air conditioner. And the air conditioner. That did a lot. <laughs> that <laughs> it, shut everything that down. shut it all down right there. And you, you get to learn... I got to learn to ask you questions. Can I run this at the same time as this? Or, Mm -hmm. you know, can I turn this on? Can I plug this in? (laughs) Is it okay to do this? Mm -hmm. Because you know a lot about amps and watts and all of that. That, That's foreign talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. You you had a label gun that you'd label (laughs) everything. (laughs) How many amps it would pull and how many, many watts it was going throughout the RV. That way we'd know. Mm-hmm. Or you would know. I w- you could add them up. Stay under 30, you'd be good. Honestly, I didn't add them up. I know. And I'm still confused. <laughs> so I just learned that the first time that I blow-dried my hair and the air conditioner was on and everything shut off, that I knew that I Couldn't did wrong. Do that. <laughs> Don't Could do that. Don't do that again. Don't do that again. But when we're when we're at home living in our RV, we're plugged into shore power. And so we take advantage of our computers are just plugged in all the time, yep. um, and we just work. They we don't even worry about the bower- battery power on our computers because we're just plugged in all the time. But now that we're, you know, right now we're recording this in Valley of the Gods, down and, the street from Monument Valley, yeah, in Utah, and we're not plugged in. We're in our 1998 mm-hmm. Jeep Wrangler, sitting on top in our tent, mm-hmm. rooftop tent. So we don't have the conveniences of just plugging in. So how did you set up our Jeep? I mean, we we just started we we started traveling even smaller about what three years ago? Yeah, well, 2015, the end of it. And that's when we got our rooftop tent. And our mm-hmm. very first trip was in our Subaru. Yep. With the rooftop tent on top. Out to the east. And then Tennessee. A few months later, we switched the rooftop tent to our Jeep. Which I like the Jeep better. Yeah. Go places. Yeah. Go, go, go. But how'd you set up the Jeep so that we could be powered up? Well, we took out the back seat. That yeah. was uh, a okay. big a big step right there to opening up space mm-hmm. in a Jeep Wrangler. Once that was out, uh, I had two AGM 100 amp hour batteries. Is AGM a... Absorb glass mat. Okay, so that's not a name brand. That's nope. a type. That, it is a type of battery. A gel. And why is that better than another kind of battery? Uh, you can mount them upside down. Don't have to worry about liquid coming out. Oh. Vibration. Like in our RV, we have... They're liquid. They're liquid. We mm-hmm. have to put distilled water in them mm-hmm. sometimes. Every once in a while, top them off. Mm-hmm. So I had two of those, one behind each seat. They are um, hooked to a solar charge controller where it can charge two separate batteries or two separate banks. And I have them on each their own bank. So charging that would be a 125-watt solar panel. And on the charge controller, you can switch it where you want 50-50 okay. to each so battery or 90-10. So it's charging the batteries at equal at 50-50, mm-hmm. or if you have one that needs charging. More than the other, you do 90-10. That's mm-hmm. the only options that you have. I think it's a Morning Star charge controller. And we got uh, that. What we was got the, that. A long time ago, we had that mounted on our RV. We have two really big... 125 s- watt each. And we installed... we You installed <laughs> that on our RV when we were living in it. Um, yes. Or traveling in it more often. That would have been 2011. 
Yeah, and when we got those, and that helped helped a spoon yeah. dock. Yeah, not have to be plugged into shore power and and not use generators. Especially sunny much. days, they could really work a work a lot. Mm-hmm. And you had them on an angle where you tilt, could them, tilt get them, more out of them, and then lay them down when we were traveling. But mm-hmm. those were mounted. But then when we decided to travel smaller, we just repurposed one of those big panels. Yes, and it is a thirty inch by 50 inch and about two and a half inches thick. And by the time we have the rooftop tent on the mounted on the roof rack, there's just enough room mm-hmm. to have. And we, it weighs 22 pounds. Yeah. We, That's, technology has involved a lot since then. There is. Uh, foldable solar now. Foldable and bendable and mm-hmm. much more compact than what we have in We'd like to invest in that, but we haven't yet. Not yet. We're just using what we have. Still works. It does. And so might as well keep mm-hmm. using it. Yep. But you've got us powered with solar. So that that has worked out yep. great. But I don't know. I mean, we you have this little inverter. Yep. It is going to one of those batteries. You've had that inverter forever. Uh, well, so, well, longer than I've known you. That's and more that's a than long 15 time. years. That's, <laughs> that's a, a long, long time. time. And it still works. And that it's is... It's a 1,500 watt inverter. Is that plugged into one of those two batteries? Yes, just a one of them. Mm-hmm. That way, if I run it down, I still have another one to run the refrigerator. For us that aren't technically... I mean, I live with you, so I know okay. what an inverter is. But what is that? That is something that you can Converts move... Converts DC to AC. So that's from 12 the volt to 120. Okay, so cigarette lighter type thing, 12 volt for those types yep. of batteries into a house, a plug in. house plug in. And then we have that one, and you permanently mounted that kind of in the back. Mm-hmm. And we have been known to have that, have wires or plugs come to the cab so that we yep. can plug in. Going down the road. Going down the road. But we recently added a, a smaller inverter that plugs right into the cigarette lighter. Yep. That's a smaller 400 watt one. And we use that. You've put a little bit of Velcro or whatever on the um, Mm, armrest. The armrest. And that sits there. And when we're driving down the road, well, here's what happens. (laughs) We we work, if I'm sitting still and we work and we deplete and we plan, we'll plug in as we're driving down the road because that gives those two batteries a little bit of a rest yeah solar's charging if the sun's out and um oh you could run it off the big inverter but if you're going down the road and you're generating electricity off your alternator from your vehicle Mm -hmm. maintaining the battery at a full state might as well plug in to the cigarette lighter which it's not drawing that much wattage and amperage anyway okay and so you're using the power that we already have from the vehicle to run the inverter to charge your laptop. But that's not a good idea to plug in to that when you're just sitting still. No. Because you could drain... Sitting still without the engine running. Now, there are vehicles that have... Dual battery setups. Battery setups, or they don't drain down your starting battery. Yep, that would be a dual battery setup with uh, one of those batteries. When it gets so low, it shuts off. So that you can... And won't kill your other battery, your main starting battery. That's smart, but mm-hmm. that's not our vehicle. Our vehicle's too old or has not been Well, converted. we haven't done a <laughs> We haven't updated to that. I know my own charging system. It works for us. may not work for you. That That is true. But when solar, or mm-hmm. the weather, excuse me, when the weather does not cooperate and solar is terrible, what do we do? Well, we can start the vehicle and charge things up that way with it at idle. Mm-hmm. Or we can just move to better weather. Yes. We have been known. Or there's several options here. <laughs> How far do you want me to go? All these options. It gives people ideas. We, you, could, you could rent a motel. Yes. You could go that? to Airbnb. Yes. You could go to a RV park, plug in. Yep. You could go to a campground, plug in. Or you could just find better weather for solar. Well, we've been known to go to campgrounds, and instead of paying for a primitive spot, we will upgrade and pay for electric. electric. Or electric and water sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we have plug-ins. We have an extension cord. Oh, by the way, people may not 
understand or know that in our Jeep we do have a refrigerator, so we have to power that yep. too when we travel. Yep, that's uh, what the other battery's for. What kind of um, refrigerator is that? It is a Norcold. And it came with our RV, and it's like mm-hmm. an ice chest, but it's... It's a freezer refrigerator. And that runs off mainly 12 one, volt. 12 volt or 120. Mm-hmm. So we, when we do have it's a power... Two-way. When we do have shore power, we will plug it into shore power to give the battery a break. Yep. I feel sorry for the battery. It has not had a break since we left on this trip. On this trip. Which is, uh, this is 12th day in it. It is. We have not plugged in once. No, we have not. And we've been doing well with our charging all of our equipment, Mm -hmm. even though we've had a lot of cloudy days. Yes. And And some rainy days. And in the past, when we do plug in at campgrounds, we have adapters just in case they don't have a uh, 110 plug 110 in. go from 30 amp a 30 amp plug in to 110 and then we have we have the adapter for the 50 amp i believe with us really yeah I'm okay you must have packed it i'm maybe not for this trip but we've had it before <laughs> yeah we have 50 at least down to a 30 down to 110 yeah. we at least have the 30 down to a 110 that usually gets most of things, yeah. but we have rarely have had to use that. Yeah. And then what the routine is, if we don't have shore power, I cannot plug in. But if we have shore power, we plug everything in and we just charge work. everything up. And when we're camping, when it gets dark and the solar's not working, I'm not allowed to charge anymore. So you I have to can, like. can, but it's hard on the battery and it has to wait till the morning time to charge up. Well, if there's sun, you say I can, but to all <laughs> these other listeners, but really I'm not allowed to. No, she's not allowed to. <laughs> because you don't want the battery to, I mean, yep. you want to There's only the so, so many cycles the battery can go up and down. And so that's when I have to close up shop and, and like actually sleep. So, mm-hmm. uh, but when we're at shore, when we have shore power, we will work way up into one, the evening. One, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Oh, no, we do not. Well, there I, was that one time in Tennessee after midnight. Well, yeah, that's about as far as we go on that. Because, you know, obviously when you're plugged in, you don't have to worry about yep. the battery. But typically, and especially on this trip, I will use my laptop until the battery, until it says no more. And I'm then done. I have to I have to power it off completely. You won't let me just shut it down. Just power it off completely and then plug in. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, it's like trying to fill up a bucket with a hole in it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's never going to get full. I noticed that, I mean, I'm, I'm not allowed again mm-hmm. <laughs> to... There's rules to this. To plug in to the inverter and work on my computer yep. at the same time. Although it can be done, but you, I hear that little motor in mm-hmm. that inverter just churning, churning away, a, trying churning to fill away. that bucket up that's got a hole in it. Yeah, so it does wonders when I know that I just have a certain amount of time to, to work. Get stuff done. Then I focus and I don't have, I don't look at the distractions or I turn off distractions mm-hmm. off my computer. So it 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 does help in that way. More productive. Yeah, and I have this Dell computer that has terrible battery. And I was debating whether to bring it on this trip mm-hmm. or not, uh, but it does not. Or it that's where I do my Adobe work, Photoshop, InDesign, yep. and what's that other one? Audition. Yep. But I bought a new Acer Chromebook. And how do you like it? I love it. I bought it and got it like just days before we left, and so I started moving into it. And I was hoping that I wouldn't have to bring my Dell, mm-hmm. but it doesn't do Adobe. But it does everything else. And the battery life is amazing. Yeah. So. I just have to purchase a second battery for the Dell. I guess so. But it's bigger and bulkier. It is bigger and bulkier. I might just have to update uh, laptops. Ideally. Newer technology, battery technology. Our team can just do all the Adobe work. Well, there you go. Okay. I'd still like messing with Adobe, though. Yeah, that's you. That's me. That's you. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah. You're I know what I can plug in. In the company, you are the one for all of our clients to do video, all the Adobe o- video s- Adobe o stuff. Adobe o stuff. No, the audio and, and podcasting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, well, let me see here. I've got some show notes. Uh oh. Let me read some of these to see if we've covered everything. You know, 
like you mentioned, mm-hmm. going into Airbnbs or hotels, sometimes it, yep. it kills two birds. It kills the internet yep. stone and it kills the power stone. We just, yep. we lug everything in. Everything. <laughs> and it's kind of, people don't probably want to see us because we don't carry suitcases. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because we live out of the vehicle. Why yep. carry a suitcase? We have every Takes nook and cranny um, filled. filled. Yeah. But I think that that that's got to give people ideas on how to yeah. power well, hopefully up. Hopefully it does. Yeah. If not, well, you know, camping may not be your thing. But at least maybe what we do with our overlanding stuff yeah. gives you ideas to get out of your cubicle. And yeah. work from anywhere. Work from somewhere else. Yeah. Be creative. Well, Robert. Yes. I'm so glad you helped I me mean, out with this thrilled. episode because. It was fun. Yeah. Glad. Got to talk about power. Power. You got the power. I've I got just, the power. I just have that song in my head now. Is that from a commercial? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I am sure that you'll be back on a episode on a Gayla Scrivener show sometime well, soon. Well, I hope so. Because, you know, we spend a lot of time together. That so. we do. But I should mention mm-hmm. to everyone here that you guys out there listening, you can hear all about my and Robert travel adventures because you can tune in to Been There Doing That podcast yep. where we kind of banter back and forth about... What we've been doing, where we've been. Little... Side Fi- trips. Fiascos. Fiascos. <laughs> happen. Some funny yeah. things. Some, oh no. We're in a tight spot. <laughs> We're in a tight spot. How we uh, handle that. Oh. Yes. Something in my notes here. Uh-oh. Sometimes when we power up, it looks like with our our um, extension cords and everything mm-hmm. and how we have everything piggybacked, it's like the Griswolds. Well, that's, that's how I imagined it. On on the uh, Christmas vacation. All 27 plugs, all plugged into one. Yes, yes. Six ways into six ways. Yes. All right, getting back. I sh- shift gears. Mm-hmm. So if you want to hear more about Robert and my travel adventures, go to been there doing that. Dot com. You'll get the links to the podcast, but you can also, it's also available on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, mm-hmm. just like this podcast. And you can uh, find the links uh, on, on the show notes here, in the show notes here. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to the Gayla Scrivener Show. If you'd like to hang out on Instagram, you can find me at G Scrivener, that's G S C R I V. E-N-E-R. Or, and, or, however you want to do. Mm-hmm. You can find Robert on Instagram, too, at Been There Doing That. We'd love for you to connect with us there. So, uh, go out there to Instagram and find us. Until next time, it's a wonderful thing to be small. But remember to always think big and do big things. Right, Robert? That is absolutely correct. Bye-bye for now.